Did you know that caring for your horse's hooves involves more than just cleaning them out on a regular basis? There are some other super beneficial ways you can take care of your horse's hooves and keep them healthy. So that's what we're going over today. To properly care for your horse's hooves, it's important to know what the actual role of the hoof is. So your horse's hooves are actually one of the most important parts of their body. There's an old saying, no hoof, no horse. Without hooves, your horse probably wouldn't be able to survive. Your horse's hooves play a huge role in circulation and blood flow. The reason for this is that the hooves actually act as a pump to get the blood back up the horse's leg. So as the blood flows, the blood's gonna flow down to their hooves but you know, the horse's leg is really tall and long, so it's hard for the blood to get back up this way. So what happens is as the horse steps and moves, the hoof is gonna pump the blood back up the leg. Another role of the horse hoof is to act as a shock absorber or a cushion when your horse moves and walks. So horses are big animals. They can weigh a lot. Tucker here, the vet said he probably weighs about 900 pounds, so that's a lot of weight. So the trauma that your horse's body receives as the horse and the weight of the horse moves on top of these legs hitting the ground, that could really damage your horse's body if it weren't for hooves. So the horse's hoof is gonna act as a shock absorber to that trauma Im impact whenever the horse hits the ground. The next thing I wanna talk about are important aspects of hoof health and variables that can affect the quality of your horse's hoof. Believe it or not, but the climate that your horse lives in is gonna drastically affect their hooves. The reason for this is largely the moisture content in your area and how it affects the horse's hooves. Horses' hooves are very much like human fingernails. They're made out of keratin, just like our fingernails, and they are always growing. Another way that they're similar is that if I've gone throughout my day and I haven't really gotten my hands wet, my nails are hard and strong. But if I go and I soak my hands in water or take a bath or something, then my fingernails are really soft and I can move them very easily without them breaking. So if your horse lives in a wet environment where their hooves are getting a lot of moisture around them, that means the horse's hooves are gonna absorb that moisture and they're gonna become soft. And so that means it's gonna be harder for them to walk on hard surfaces. You may see horses in the desert that can easily walk across stones and rocks because their hooves are so solid and hard and strong. But if a horse is in a wetter climate, it's gonna have a hard time and the feet are gonna be more sensitive in terms of what they're walking on. The amount of moisture that your horse's hooves is absorbing is also gonna affect the growth of the hoof. A horse that's absorbing a lot of water is going to grow much faster compared to a hoof that is dry and doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. There are things you can do based off of your climate that's gonna help your horse's hooves stay consistent and healthy. Number one, if you live in a wetter climate or maybe you're just in a climate where suddenly you've received a lot of rain and it's just really wet out, one thing you wanna do is make sure your horse has a dry place they can escape to. So if your horse is turned out, make sure that they have a run-in that's dry that they can go and stand in. Or another thing you can do is you can pull your horse from the pasture and it's said that just giving them one hour of standing on dry ground can really benefit the hoof. So in the winter time when it rains a lot here, I'll take Tucker out and I'll just let him stand in the barn on the concrete for an hour just to let his hooves dry out. If you live in an environment that can go between wet spells and dry spells, it's important to know that this can actually cause your horse's hooves to become brittle and cracked. So if that's happening, what you wanna do is try and maintain a balance within the hoof. So if you've had a wet spell and now it's going into a dry spell, one thing you can do is moisturize your horse's hooves and just put like a conditioner on them. So here's some hoof moisturizer and all it does is it kinda of comes in like a paintbrush form. Tucker is so interested. And what you do is you just paint this on your horse's hooves and it's gonna help give the horse the moisture in their hooves that they're used to if you're starting to go through a dry spell. And so this will help the hooves from cracking or becoming brittle. So you just paint that on and that's gonna moisturize the hoof. If you live in a dry climate, that means your horse's hooves are probably really good. They're dry and they're strong and they're hard. So that means you can walk across hard surfaces and all of that. So one thing you're gonna wanna avoid in this climate is going into water and letting your horse just stand in water like I used to ride my horse into the river and we'd just stand and play in the river. But then my horse is going from a wet environment to a dry environment really quickly. And so that's gonna cause the hoof to dry out and crack just like it would from a wet spell to a dry spell. So that's just something to keep in mind. 
Another important aspect of your horse's hoof health that we've kind of already gone over is circulation. As your horse moves and walks, each time they take a step, their hoof is gonna act as a pump to pump blood back up the leg. So if that's what the horse's hoof does, what happens if your horse isn't moving or walking then? A sedentary lifestyle is gonna drastically affect your horse's circulation. Number one, they're not able to move and so they're not able to pump blood back up their legs. So if your horse is in a stall, this may be one reason they're getting stocked up legs is because they're not able to move and get that circulation going. But proper blood flows enables tissues and muscles to become stronger, while decreased blood flow is going to make them become weaker and not as strong. So the more the blood is flowing properly through your horse, the healthier they're going to be. And it's also going to move toxins out of the body as it should, compared to if your horse is just standing still all the time, those toxins are going to be able to settle in their body. So what's the answer for this? The answer for keeping your horse's hooves healthy based off of circulation is exercise. Horses need exercise not only to control their weight, but also for the health of their hooves. Exercise can look like turnout or hand walking or even riding. I once heard a farrier say that a great way to ensure that your horse's hooves stay healthy is by riding them on a regular basis. And the reason for this is that by riding your horse, you're getting them moving, you're getting their feet falling, and so that way, that blood's gonna be pumping and circulating back up through their body. Another thing that's gonna affect your horse's hooves is your horse's diet, what they're eating and what they're consuming. So sugar is gonna play a very big role in the health of your horse's hooves. So unfortunately, horses consume a lot more sugar nowadays than they were originally designed to. We give them sweet feeds that have sugar, they're on pasture that has grass that has a very sugar high content. And so horses are consuming a lot of sugar. So in basic terms, the way this affects your horse's hooves is that the sugar and the starches actually get into your horse's blood and it travels down to the hoof and then the hoof's tissues, like the tissues within the hoof, are very sensitive to that stuff, to that glucose and starch and stuff like that. And so if those things get stuck down in the hoof, the hoof becomes inflamed and that's known as laminitis. Laminitis is a health condition that should be taken seriously as it can lead to even more severe conditions like founder. So since we've been talking about horse hooves so much, I wanted to show you all my scoop boots that my friends over at Scoop Boot were so kind to send us. These are great because I keep Tucker barefoot as much as I can, so that means he doesn't have shoes on his feet. But that can be hard when we ride across hard surfaces. We're in a wetter climate here, so his feet are a little bit softer. So these are actually more like tennis shoes where you can put them on and take them off very easily. And they have a sole like a tennis shoe that makes it easy for Tucker to just walk across rocks. If you click the link in the description and use my code equinehelper479 at checkout, you can get 10% off your pair of scoop boots. In order to properly care for your horse's hooves, it's important to know the important parts of your horse's hooves and their function. So I'm just gonna walk you through the parts of the hoof real quick. This most notable thing right here, this is, it's like a triangle. This is called the horse's frog. And this is largely what the horse walks on if their hooves are correctly shaped, is when they step, this is gonna to touch the ground. This part right here is the sole of the hoof. Right here, you kind of see a ring around the hoof. This is the hoof wall. And so this is actually, if you look at the hoof, when the hoof is on the ground, this is what you see. So the hoof wall is kind of like the protective outer layer. And it's also, if your horse has shoes, the hoof wall is the layer that the nails go into for the shoes. These kind of ridges right here are known as the bars, and these are the collateral grooves, so these grooves around the frog. Of course, you have the toe of the hoof and the heel of the hoof. So those are basically the important parts of the hoof that you should know. There's actually another part of the hoof that you can't see, but it's a very vital to the function and the support and structure of the hoof. So this part I'm talking about is the coffin bone. So the coffin bone is a bone that's in the middle of your horse's hoof. So there's tissue inside of the hoof that connects the hoof with the coffin bone. So the coffin bone is, they pretty much support each other. So the hoof and the tissue support the coffin bone and vice versa, the coffin bone is also gonna support the hoof. So when those tissues become damaged, like when your horse has laminitis, that can put strain on the coffin bone and those tissues can be damaged to the point where the coffin bone starts to drop or move around in the hoof and when that happens that is called founder and it can be fatal to your horse so 
That's an important part you need to know even though you cannot see it. So one of the best things you can do to care for your horse's hooves is to clean them out on a regular basis. So cleaning your horse's hooves is basically the equivalent to brushing your teeth every day in the fact that it goes a long way in making sure your horse's hooves are healthy. So I'm just gonna do a very quick overview of how you clean your horse's hooves. I like these types of hoof picks that have the bristles just so I can brush out any other dirt that may be in the hoof. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by standing next to the horse's shoulder or leg. So and I'm gonna face backwards. So I'm either gonna stand here at the shoulder to pick up that foot, or here at the hip to pick up the hind foot. And then what I like to do is just kind of run my hand down the horse's legs so they know what I'm expecting. And Tucker knows what I'm expecting, so he immediately starts picking up his hoof. But you can pull on the fetlock right here to get them to pick up their feet. And then you'll just pick out all the dirt out of the hoof and you wanna make sure you get in these grooves real well. Obviously don't pick at the frog. And then I like to brush out any remaining dirt just to remove everything that may be in there. So if picking out your horse's hooves is new to you or maybe you don't feel confident about it, I have an entire video dedicated to walking you through how to clean out your horse's hooves step by step. So I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description. Besides cleaning out your horse's hooves, your horse is also gonna need their hooves trimmed on a regular basis. Depending on the climate you're in, the time between trimmings can vary. So if you're in a more dry climate where the horse's hooves may not be growing as fast, it may be every eight weeks that you need the farrier out. If you're in a wetter climate or maybe your horse just needs more care for their feet, the farrier could be seeing them up to four weeks at a time, like every four weeks. I get Tucker done here about every six weeks. And so the professional that's gonna care for your horse's hooves in this way is known as a farrier. And they can either trim your horse's hooves or put shoes on, depending on the needs of your horse. The reason a visit from the farrier is so important is because as a horse's hoof grows, their foot can actually become unbalanced when it becomes more difficult for them to walk. If their hoof grows a little unevenly or maybe it's worn on one side more than the other, it can become really uncomfortable to walk and it can put strain on the rest of their body. So this is why it's important for your horse to see a farrier on a regular basis and get their hooves trimmed. As a professional, your farrier should be able to also give you advice on the care your horse needs. So if your horse maybe has weaker hooves and the farrier can recommend a supplement like biotin that's really gonna help the hooves become strong. Or maybe your farrier will be able to tell you whether or not your horse needs shoes, just depending on what you wanna do. So in addition to caring for your horse's hooves, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you need to know when it comes to caring for and owning a horse. So I actually have made a video that's just a huge overview of everything you need to know when it comes to caring for your horse and owning a horse and making sure they're staying healthy. So I'll put the link in the description to that video for you to check out. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.